not only you have to provide a desktop uh, portal API for that, but apps have to start using them and removing the Flatpak permission to talk to Pulse Audio directly. The goal is to remove all static permissions and everything is dynamic mm -hmm. and you can control it. Um, and this is one of the, this is one of those static permissions that we want to get rid of. So the idea is basically the same. You request access to, um, I don't know. I think the API, the proposed API allows you to request access to speakers, microphones, and audio monitoring, mm -hmm. um, either combination of these three, you can just request your application can just request like speakers and we don't even have to pop up a, a permission dialog in front of you because it's harmless. Mm -hmm. But if it wants to use your microphone, that's a little bit more privacy sensitive. So it's probably a better idea to ask you if you want to allow it or not. Mm -hmm. But these policies are also defi defined by the backend. So if, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but if KDE says like, nah, this is too bothersome, just allow everything. And then people can remove the permission if they want to later on. They can do that as well. Pretty nice, but we have to convince people that it's worth using it. So once you have permission, you, you, you connect to Pipewire and then Pipewire is going to magically tell you, here are the audio devices, here are the video devices, here are the whatever devices you requested, things like that. Well, that sort of ties into what I did want to get to at some point. Why should somebody care about this this whole idea of bringing a permission system onto the Linux desktop? Because this is something that's well established in Android, for example. Like, if an app wants to pretty much get anything, it will need to ask you about it. Like, it wants to get access to your camera. It needs to ask you. It wants web access. It will need to ask you. Your contacts needs to ask you. A lot of... Like, the, the, Linux has never had this. Like, this is just not a thing that we've done. Why should somebody care? Oh, I can start this. Uh, I can prefix this with that XKCD. I don't remember the, num the number, but that one that says, if somebody gets access to your computer, they can read your emails. Your Linux computer, they can read your emails. They can read your personal files and whatever, all, all of your information, but they cannot access root. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh, like that's removed the world shuffled from one server with many client, with many clients and each one of them having their own thing going on to you using your computer, usually with a single user mm -hmm. on your computer. And instead of Trusting each other, you don't trust the things that you're running on your computer. Mm -hmm. It can be a malicious website, it can be a malicious application, it can have a pretty front facing interface, but in, on the back end, it's mining crypto using your GPU and you don't notice. So we moved, we shuffled from a world where you have to, where you had to be cautious about other users of your computer accessing your information. Not that that's not important to this day, it is, still is. But also within the same user, you have um, this level of uncertainty about what you're running. And that's particularly bad for proprietary apps where you cannot access the code, you cannot like validate if what you're running is going to steal something from you. So a permission system is necessary mm -hmm. um in in this in this scenario where you you cannot fully trust all applications that you're running you have to have a you have to have a mechanism that allows you to block it from accessing your stuff mm -hmm. um like i don't know whatever you install Skype 2 and Skype 2 keeps your, keeps using your microphone to figure out what you're talking and train an AI model to, I don't know, whatever. It keeps accessing your microphone without you noticing. Well, like a simple example in X11 is literally any application can just be a keylogger if it wants to. Yeah, I had to write a keylogger for X11 to figure out, uh, uh, to, to find the root cause of an OBS bug with browser docs. <laughs> <laughs> It's not only 
allowed and possible. It is sometimes required, mm -hmm. even if you don't want to write a keylogger, even, even if you don't want to be an evil person, you're going to be forced to be one. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it is important, and we are lagging behind already, um, especially when you consider the mobile space. Mm -hmm. They have permissions and are stricter. I think Android has one. Each app is its own Unix user, even. So it uses a combination of permissions and combination of permissions and Unix permissions, both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, we want to have that on the desktop. And I think it is not, some, not just something cool like, ooh, this app asks for my permission. Most of the time, it's just an annoyance. You know, you don't want to see dialogues. You install an app, and you just want to use it. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I'm not trying to paint myself into the privacy, um, the hyper-enthusiastic, uh, paranoid privacy lover. We're recording this on but Discord. It <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It is a necessity these days. Mm -hmm. I feel like we don't have on the Linux desktop, we don't have corporate control over it. Mm -hmm. So much so that we can implement these things. Um, we can implement these things without any particular com company coming to us and say, no, you really don't want this permission system because we want to do everything we want with your desktop. Mm -hmm. um, and I see it like maybe this is too too far ahead, but I see that in the future Linux is going to be one bastion of um, of desktop computing, not in the sense of the masses using it, but in the sense of people using it because it's the only viable option, mm -hmm. not because it's the best option necessarily, you know. Every Windows release, people, uh, people like it is kind of a news cliche at this point. But every Windows release, people start saying things like, "Windows is gonna um, make itself into a subscription OS or I something keep, like that." I keep hearing uh, software as a service. Every every couple of months, soft, Windows twelve, we software as a service, and I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Like it. It wouldn't surprise us, right? Yeah. And it wouldn't be. A, it wouldn't be. Who cares what macOS yeah. is doing? They're doing. They're they're their own ecosystem. They're controlled, but I feel like most of these companies have these mechanisms. Um, like Google has a mechanism, a, per, a permissions mechanism on Android because of liability. Mm -hmm. Because if Google allowed everything in their app store, and people start losing money out of that, they would get tons of lawsuits mm -hmm. so it's more like a protection for google instead of a protection for you mm. uh, a person using their uh, devices you know in in the android case for example but i i can i can think the same for apple when it comes to linux that when it comes to the linux desktop who's going to be sued mm. it's a community endeavor it is a massive number of sub communities working because a big entity towards something else. But now we, we're facing a, uh, I feel like we're facing a, a point in time where we have to protect ourselves from things that are not coming from the community. And that's where the whole sandboxing and not being able to access your files and your devices and whatever come into place. I was working on the USB portal. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working in, I've been working on this portal existed. this month. It, it doesn't exist yet. I'm doing oh. it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I, is there an open issue about it right now? Or is it just like uh, it's something... I think there's a three-year-old merge request. I published a branch in my fork of um, SDG Desktop Portal. It's not ready yet, but one point that people kept saying is that... Five-year-old. If... Five-year-old yes. issue about it. Yeah. The issue is five-year-old. There is a draft merge request that is, I think, three-year-old. Oh, okay, okay, right, right, right. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm basically redoing that. At this point, it's almost from scratch. Mm -hmm. But Rafi64 did a fantastic work, like, cracking this initial implementation. 
one of the things that people kept saying is that if an app has access, it doesn't even have to read your devices, but it, if it's able to detect that you have a certain, I don't know, YubiKey plugged in your computer, they can fingerprint you. Mm. And they will probably do. Like a malicious app can know who you are by what devices you have connected on your computer. Hmm. So we have to be really careful with those things, and that's that's the one of the major selling points for portals. The other, I think, is just providing a desktop API. Everything was in X11 days. Everything, everyone could do anything at any time, every app. Every app could participate in the compositing process of another app. So one app can render stuff on another app's interface. Yeah. <laughs> One app can tell the other app where they should be. They, there's literally no boundaries. Every, there's no um, hard lines, you know, 